What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown. As of the recording of this video, which is on Friday, the 24th of April, gold spot market closed at $1,730 per ounce, which if you follow gold closely at all, that's just a tad under the year to date highs. And to get to any price higher than that, you'd have to go back to 2011. The futures market closed a tad bit higher at 1745 and peaked earlier this month just around 1790. So for anybody who's investing in gold right now and is concerned about the sell-off that happened in gold earlier last month when the coronavirus crisis really started to hit, people are starting to wonder, is the gold rally overblown right now? Has it kind of run out of steam? Should we expect some sort of a 10, 20, 30% correction like we saw back in 2008 before the real rally kicks in? Or is it just smooth sailing from here? Let's dive in. The bottom line is I believe we are past the worst of the sell-offs in the gold market. Of course, nothing is ever a straight up line, but I don't think we're going to see anything like we did at the end of March when we had about a 13, 14% sell-off from top to bottom. Now here's why the 2008 comparison when gold sold off about 30% from top to bottom before it began its real big rally up to around 1900 took place as the Federal Reserve was kind of slow in uh, kicking their liquidity and their rescue operations into gear. And as we've seen, the Federal Reserve has been has been insanely fast. In fact, when you pair together the amount of money that the Federal Reserve with monetary stimulus plus the Treasury through fiscal stimulus has injected into the economy. We are sitting currently at about 35% of our GDP in the last one month. Now, to put that in comparison, the entire New Deal that FDR put into place after the Great Depression cost about 40% of GDP over two years. So the response on printing and creating new money and forcing that money into the economy has been extremely severe, extremely quick. Now we know gold does poorly in liquidity crises because in a liquidity crisis, you don't sell what you want, you sell what you can. And of course, markets dropped a lot more. And so when margin calls were needing to be met, when bills were needing to be paid, you sell what you can and gold held its value a lot better than some of the other things did. So of course it's gonna get sold off as well. So yeah, we saw about a 13% drop, but the Fed came in and uh, really eased the liquidity concerns. And so the large players, the large institutions are no longer at a place like they were last month where they're needing to sell absolutely everything they can as fast as possible. They can access some of the easier money. The Federal Reserve has opened up all of these emergency facilities and programs in order to get this new Newly created money into the hands of the banks and the institutions and the corporations. Now we see gold play out the opposite way of a liquidity crisis in insolvency crises. That means when things are going bankrupt, when governments around the world are defaulting on their debt, when inflation concerns really start to pick up, that's when you start to see money really pile into gold. So it looks to me like we're past the liquidity crisis and we're entering in to the insolvency phase. So that's the first driver of the price of gold. Gold. The second driver of the price of gold is going to be the amount of big money that's allocated to it. Now, if you look at central bank holdings around the world right now, we've got about 19% of central bank assets are held. Central bank reserves are held in gold. The trend is up. Now, that's not a lot compared to everything else that they hold like sovereign debt, but the trend is going in the favor of gold. If you look at worldgoldcouncil.org, you can see that for the last number of years, central banks around the world have been net buyers of gold and the pace at which they're buying gold has been increasing. Even Russia, who just a couple of weeks ago said that they were going to have to take a step back from buying gold and that the reason for that was because they, you know, they derive a lot of their profits in their country from uh, oil and the fact that they were dumping all of this oil onto the market in conjunction with Saudi Arabia, cutting prices, they knew they weren't going to have the revenue, but guess what? They actually did buy gold, even though they said they were not going to be able to. And so the trend is continuing. Central banks are building 
up their gold reserves. There's nothing about anything that's happening in today's environment that's stopping that. In fact, whatever all the central banks are doing to their own currencies are giving them the impetus to buy gold so that they have something to fall back on when the inevitable collapse actually happens. It's kind of like a do what they do, don't do what they say kind of thing. They're, they're telling us to use the currency, but themselves, what they're doing with that currency is they're buying gold. Now, the second big money that has uh, an influence over the price of gold is largely going to be institutions, things like pensions, retirement accounts, asset managers, money managers. And if you look at the institutional, total institutional allocation to gold right now, we're sitting at about a half a percent, which is basically nothing. During the last financial crisis, we got up to about 1.1% uh, allocation to gold. And so even with a slight move that direction to only the amount that we reached in the last crisis, you're going to see a much larger move in gold right now because of where we're starting from versus where we started from back then. And so that second factor that influences the price of gold, which is big money, whether it's moved into gold yet or not, the trend is that more big money is moving into gold. And there's currently only a small allocation. It's not it's not a crowded trade at this point. If you buy gold right now, you're still getting in early before a massive amount of the rest of the money starts moving in to drive up the price. Now, the third thing that really, really, really influences the the price of gold is the futures market, the futures trading on gold. Bullion banks around the world are still at a net short position with their futures contracts, and it's a huge net short position on gold. And it looks like every time over the past couple of weeks and couple of months that they've tried to pare back their positions to try and get out of these short positions, it's driving the price of gold up so quickly that they're having to kind of backtrack and load up on shorts again to try and push the price back down. Now, I've talked about this before in past videos, any of my past videos that you can go find where I'm speaking about gold, but there's not anywhere near enough gold to back up the futures contracts. That's just the way the futures uh, market on gold works. They use leased gold from the central banks. They used unallocated accounts. The bullion banks are, they're, they're real banks. And so they have uh, the ability to use credit to expand the money supply, to increase their positions. And so the entire gold market is kind of inflated. It trades a lot. There's a lot more claims on the actual physical gold than there really is. And that's why when we see the London reports showing how much gold is in their vaults in order to back up all of the trading, they're actually they're actually giving numbers that are that take into account gold that is already owned by central banks, ETFs, and privately owned gold. The amount of gold that is actually at play for trading and fulfilling contracts is about 1,000 tons more likely than the 8,000 tons which they say they have. In practice, what this means is that as the price of gold moves up a little bit here, a little bit there, these bullion banks and these traders, the trading desks, they're going to have to pare back their shorts, which when you pare back a short position, you're buying, you're contributing buying pressure. So that's going to drive it up even more. And so that's the biggest piece, more than institutional allocation to gold, more than insolvency or sovereign defaults or liquidity crises. The biggest factor that's going to cause a giant pop in the price of gold is when these massive amounts of short futures contracts have to be rolled back because any move up just compounds the problem and makes that buying pressure come in faster and harder as all of the traders that are participating in this same trade have to unwind their positions and contribute buying power, which drives the price up even more. So the bottom line is no, the gold rally has not run out of steam. In fact, I don't even think we've begun to see the impressive side of the gold rally that we are about to enter into. And if I did not already have my full position in gold already built, I would absolutely be buying gold at these prices, especially compared to just holding cash. I'm not banking at all on a hope for a little bit of a pullback to maybe 1650 or maybe 1600 at the lowest. I'm not banking on that at all because the asymmetric payoff to that, maybe saving a hundred bucks per ounce on a pullback to compare it to how high this thing can go, that risk to reward isn't worth it to me. So if I'm not already in gold at this point, I'm not worried about the price right now. We have a lot further to go. Thank you so much for watching and you guys have a great day.